Well, I tell you what, good afternoon again, and welcome to another edition of Block Sports, and we are live here at Kentucky State University, and this is homecoming weekend, and as you can see on the field, uh, everybody's out there, uh, KSU is out there warming up on their end of the field, as you can see. And on the other end of the field, let's go over there, you have Albany State. So this, hopefully for KSU, will be a good game. And everybody's hoping that KSU can end up on the winning side of the spectrum. And But we shall see how everything goes today and uh, whether or not KSU will be on the winning side and... Let's take a look at the records today. And as we take a look at the records, we see that Tuskegee sits atop with Benedict, Allen, Fort Valley State, Miles, and Albany State. None of these teams have lost a game yet in the conference, that is. But at the same time, the only teams that are undefeated overall as you can see, happens to be Tuskegee, Benedict, and Allen. Slight surprise, but yet still. That's why you play the game, and that's why you play the teams that are in front of you. Because right now, Allen appears to be doing a pretty good job of holding on. Now, as we continue to take a look at the field and who's out there and uh, what they're doing, as you can see, KSU, they're going through their drills right now and same thing with albany state so they're getting ready and doing all of their warm-ups in preparation for today's matchup now when we talk about today's matchup this is what we have set up for today's slate for the siac and as far as the siac goes we have central state hosting miles and as far as i'm concerned that's going to be one of those games that Miles is looking to have a little bit of fun, but we're going to see. That's why they play the game. Allen is going to host Fort Valley State. Now, I will say this much. Fort Valley lost to Tuskegee earlier on during the year. And even though they lost to Tuskegee early on during the year, Fort Valley State looks good. Let me repeat that. Fort Valley State looks pretty good and with that being the case it's going to be interesting on and in whether or not Allen can hang with Fort Valley State they have a pretty good passing attack they also this is Fort Valley State and they also have a pretty good running game so have not seen a lot of Allen this year but it'll be interesting to see what Allen is able to bring to the table in this fight today between those two teams and the reason why I say between these two teams, because Fort Valley State, let's go back to the standings, as you see, is undefeated in conference play, as well as they are uh, as well as Allen is undefeated not only in conference play, but they're also undefeated overall. The game that Fort Valley when they played Tuskegee. That was a non-conference game, and that was for the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, uh, the Red Tails Classic, and that was held during uh, that first week. So with these two teams playing, that means Fort Valley and Allen, it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top, and that will thin out the herd in terms of, no pun intended, but that will thin out the group of undefeateds in the conference and as we continue on with the games today of course this game here albany state is here to play kentucky state clark atlanta hosts lane alabama a and m will host tuskegee we'll see whether or not tuskegee can continue their uh their undefeated ways savannah state will host edward waters and morehouse travels down to benedict 
My only question is, is whether or not Benedict is going to continue to slough up on the defense. Their last two games, they looked like they were having issues. They gave up seven points in one game, and they gave up three points the next one. That defense is really sloughing off. So, <laughs> and of course, I'm being very facetious here, but at the same time, that defense, 10 points, four games, wow. We'll see what Morehouse brings to the table. But the only problem is Morehouse is one of those teams that hasn't won a game. And because they're one of those teams, let's go back to the standings. And as you can see, Morehouse is one of those teams that's at the bottom. One of three teams that is yet to win a game at all. You have one team that is Central State and Kentucky State that has at least won a game. But the only problem is Morehouse is yet to win any games. And for them to turn their season around and defeat Benedict today, folks, that's going to be a tall order for anyone, especially with the way Benedict is playing. And Benedict is playing at home. And if Benedict end up losing this game, uh, 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 look, guys, I have a lot of good friends that's at Morehouse. I have a lot of friends that's at a lot of the HBCUs. But for my friends that's at Morehouse, I apologize. But, guys, I don't see it today. Hopefully next week will be a much better weekend for you. But for this week, I'm sorry, guys, I just don't see it in terms of there being uh, a very exciting day for Morehouse fans. And since this is a home game for Benedict, I can see where Benedict fans will be excited for today and what today will bring. But we shall see. Because why? That's why they play the game. Because a lot of teams have been upset because they looked ahead because of what they thought that was in front of them. And I apologize to you because I'm constantly wiping off sweat. It's not that hot. But yet and still, I've been going up and down, up and down the stairs. And because I've been going up and down the stairs, I'm just a little hot, just a little sweaty. So I'm going to let you guys take a look real quick at the football field again as Albany State is uh, doing their drills. And so I'm just going to make sure that the camera is just on the 50-yard line so you can have a good view of the of the field so I shall return
All right, guys, I'm back in the house here. And as we continue on, like I said, it's a beautiful sunshiny day out here. Great day for football. It's not extremely hot out here, but the one thing I can say is that the fans are, after you sit in the stands for a little while, you're going to feel the heat. And so you're going to be consuming lots of water. Um, I can easily say, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to pan my camera over, and we're going to take a look. I guess you could almost call this Tent City. Let's see if I can zoom in here for you just to let you see what it is and what's going on over there for homecoming. Got a lot of individuals coming in from out of town enjoying the homecoming. I was brought in to do some filming for the Alumni Association. And I can tell you, these alums, they know how to party. And I've had a good time while I've been here. I know the president of the Kentucky State National Alumni Association. And he has shown me a great time as well as all of the alums that are here at KSU. Great place to be, great place to visit, great place to go to school. But of course, I'm just a little biased because I am an HBCU graduate. But as we continue on, as I said, as far as the SIAC goes, we've taken a look at their schedule. Now, let's take a look at all the other HBCUs around the country because this game is also being shown on HBCU Go and because this game is also uh, uh, being broadcast live by HBCU Go, I will have to shut off and no, no later than 30 minutes from now. But as we take a look at the CIAA and, and their standings and then let's take a look at the games that are being played, here we go. For the CIAA, what we have is that we have Virginia State sits atop the standings 2-0 in the Northern Division. And they are tied with Bowie State. Following them is Virginia Union at 1-1. One one. But overall, only Virginia State has an undefeated record of 4-0. Next followed by Bowie State and Virginia Union. The other three teams in the conference Bluefield, Elizabeth City, and Lincoln. They stand at 1-3 overall, but 0-2 in conference play. And we'll talk about Bluefield a little bit later, all because of their previous record. Next, in the Southern Division, we have, as far as I'm concerned, I may be the only one, but as far as I'm concerned, the surprise of the year is Johnson C. Smith. They sit atop. The, South, the Southern Division Conference tied with Fort Valley State, the champs of the CIAA, and Winston-Salem. But Johnson C. Smith is 3-1, and one, whereas Fayetteville and Winston-Salem, they are 2-2. Two and two. Shaw happens to be 1-1. One one. I'm still waiting on that breakout for Shaw. I know Shaw has it in them. I've been waiting on him, and... They just have not had that breakout season just yet. They have been in second place in the Southern Division. But unfortunately, they have not had that year yet where they have broken out of the pack and end up taking the Southern Division. But as we continue on, we see, like I said, Shaw is 1-1 one one in conference play, but they are 1-3 overall. And, of course, they won their last game, making sure they were 1-1 one one in conference play. But Livingstone and St. Augustine's, they are yet to see and yet to taste victory. Now, in terms of the games that are to be played today, here you are. Here's the schedule. You have Johnson C. Smith host, uh, traveling to Elizabeth City. And a lot of people would say, well, that's a toss-up game. But the way Johnson C. Smith has been playing, Johnson C. Smith should have this game in hand. Why? Let's go back to the standings. As you see, Johnson C. Smith is undefeated, whereas Elizabeth City 
They've only won one game overall. Johnson C. Smith is 3-1. and one. They are undefeated in conference play. Now, as we continue on, Virginia State will travel down to Shaw. Virginia State, as we go back, they sit atop the Northern Division at 4-0, 2-0 in conference play. But Shaw, they just won their last game. So the question is whether or not Shaw can keep up the momentum. Now, Bluefield State, the reason why I, bl I brought up Bluefield State is for the mere fact with Bluefield. The one thing about them is that, and I've said this pretty much every week, the last two years, they have never tasted a season under 500. Could this be the first year? They went a number of years without having a football team. They brought the football team back two years ago. Or should I say three seasons ago? And the last two seasons, they were four and three and four and four. As I said, not tasting in a season where they were under 500. Now, now, with their record, and let's go back and look at their record again. They are 0 and 2 in conference play, 1 and 3. 1 and 3 overall. And for them now, Bluefield, to have to go and host Fayetteville State, the defending champs of the CIAA, that is going to be, as I said, there is another tall order for them to see if they can come out and win because they were having success against uh, other schools in the CIAA. But now since you are now in conference and you are now in conference play, it's a different ball of wax. As we can continue on, St. Augustine will host Virginia Union. Lincoln will host Winston-Salem. And Bowie State travels to Livingstone today. And that game is going to be at 4 p.m. All the other games, as you can see, start at 1 p.m. As we continue on... Okay, sorry about that. But as we continue on, taking a look at the field here, we've talked about the CIAA, we've talked about the SIAC, and we're here at an SIAC school. But let's go ahead and move forward and take a look at the MEAC and see what we have going on with the MEAC here. Now with the MEAC. The games that are being played today, you have Howard traveling to Robert Morris. North Carolina Central will play host to Campbell. Now, why is this game of interest? Last season, Campbell played North Carolina Central and pretty much had their way with North Carolina Central. A common opponent between with Campbell was Jackson State. And so Jackson State and North Carolina Central played against each other last year. Central played them earlier in the year. Jackson State played them in the middle part of the season. Jackson State was more successful in the game, and they defeated Campbell. And if I'm not mistaken, the score of that game was 22-14. If I'm not mistaken, whereas North Carolina Central lost to Campbell. I do not remember that score. But in the Celebration Bowl, even though you have common opponents and you try to figure out, okay, with these common opponents, who do you think has the advantage and who should win? Celebration Bowl was a great game. But North Carolina Central, they were the bullies of the game and they showed it. Now, the question is, this year, since they're playing home and home, last year, Central played, Central traveled to Campbell. This year, 
Campbell has to travel to Central. And we will see whether or not there's a difference because Campbell had to travel to Jackson State last year, and it did make a difference. But you could see that Campbell is a very tough opponent. But as we can continue on, Morgan State, and I will continue to say, Morgan State is the sleeper for this conference. Even though when we take a look at the standings, you will ask the question of how can you say that? But I will, I'll go there when we get to the standings. But Morgan State travels to Yale. Delaware State hosts Virginia University of Lynchburg. And Delaware State should get off the snide in this game and defeat the University of Lynchburg of Virginia. They should win this game. And if they don't, I don't see Delaware State winning any games this season, period. End of, end of discussion. They will not win any games if they cannot defeat Virginia of Lynchburg. And, of course, Norfolk State, they will host one of their previous MEAC uh, opponents, and this happened to be A&T. So North Carolina A&T will travel down to Norfolk for this game, and this game is scheduled to be at 2 o'clock. I will go ahead and check on the Robert Morris and Howard game to see how well Howard University is doing because that game should have started about 30 minutes ago, and that game is to be played on ESPN+. And if they are having success, congratulations for Howard because Howard is projected to finish right behind North Carolina Central. But I still say if either of these teams slip, if either of these teams slip, I can see Morgan State slipping in there. But as we go to the standings, guess what? We see another coach that's in there, Coach Odom. Coach Odom is in there at 2-2. Two and two. They haven't played, of course, any conference games as of yet. But Coach Odom has the Spartans at 2-2 two and two so far. And we will see whether or not they are able to hold and continue to mow through. Because as you saw, Norfolk State, they play North Carolina A&T. Now, as far as A&T goes, A&T is not having the season that they're accustomed to having. They are not good as they used to be and we can easily go back and look at and look at the standings and i and i and i will uh but at the same time a and t is not playing the kind of ball that they're accustomed to playing but as we continue to look at the standings and look at the scores and 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 not just the scores but look at the standings and look at the games that are being played this week I can tell you another team to not count out. South Carolina State hosted the Citadel, and they beat them up pretty bad and for their first win. And as a matter of fact, uh, Coach Pugh, uh, even though this is his last season, he was actually looking at that game as going to be a really, really tough game. Uh, he had a really tough four-game skid. And when, and when you take a look at those four games, uh, that they had, it was kind of tough. It was kind of rough for him, starting out with Jackson State and not playing very well on both sides of the ball. You could tell it, it just seemed like they were just not in the game, they, uh, and it just seemed like they were just going through the motions in that very first game against Jackson State University. But at the same time, you could tell they were a Coach Pew team because they never quit, they never stopped. And, and that was quite evident. But as I continue to go, unfortunately with Delaware State, they're yet to taste victory. They're the only team in the conference to not win a game so far. And if they do not win this weekend, it will be very hard, very hard for me to see them winning any games this season whatsoever. Now let's move over to the SWAC conference. Now as far as the SWAC conference goes, 
as you can see, this is these are the games that are being played today. And you have a couple of teams that have this weekend off. As we take a look at the games for this weekend, here you are. You see Texas Southern hosting Lincoln of California. Alabama A&M will host Tuskegee. Now, even though Tuskegee is the Division II school, Tuskegee played Alabama State last, uh, last week, and guess what happened to them? They defeated. Uh, I'm sorry, not last week, two weeks ago. And they defeated Alabama State. That was a hard-fought game. And, uh, but Alabama State ended up losing that game to Tuskegee. So Alabama A&M, they need to watch their P's and Q's because if they don't, if they do not watch Tuskegee, Tuskegee is tough. And you can tell they're tough because they came in and they played a SWAC school. And it is hard to win in the SWAC because why? There is no easy win in the SWAC whatsoever. Now in regards to the next game, Pine Bluff will host Southern University. Now, Southern is not having the kind of year that you're accustomed to Southern University playing. And under their breath, you can hear some of the grumbling of some of the Southernite or some of the Jaguar fans. And with some of those Jaguar fans, you can easily hear what they're saying. They're saying, what's going on? The coach is not doing a ABC XYZ. They're, they're really complaining. I've been hearing uh, some grumbling from some of the fans. But I'm waiting to see Southern University play Southern University football. I'm just glad they didn't do it against Jackson State. <laughs> of course, I'm a Tiger to the end. And as you can see, the Tigers are not playing this weekend. They have this weekend off. But as far as the other games, you have Alabama State hosting Alcorn. Each of these teams are coming off of a loss, and we'll see which team can rebound today. And all of these games are going to be played later on during the day. Of course, Grambling and Prairie View, they're playing later on today, and, it'll, and we'll see because Grambling has won their last two games. Prairie View at least won last week. And then, of course, that last game is going to be between Mississippi Valley Hosting Florida A&M. Now, I can tell you one thing, guys. The Rattlers, guys, those Rattlers look tough. I'm sorry. I, 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 I just, as, as a Tiger, I just don't see the Rattlers losing any games this year. They look really tough. They have, they, uh, the Tigers came into the Orange Blossom Classic. And those rattlers made those tigers look that look like they were little cubs. Just got to say it like it is. That first half, they just ran and threw the ball down their throat. And right now, even the game against Alabama State this past weekend, that game was tight. It was 14 to 10 going into the fourth quarter. And then all of a sudden, Florida and m they just, they just started hitting it. And... With the way Florida A&M is playing, unless Bethune can muster up a win and do a lot better, uh, it'll be kind of interesting to see whether or not anyone can challenge A&M this year. But as I said, this is a young season, and we shall see. Now let us continue on with the, with the standings. Now as we look at the standings now, as I said, you see that Florida A&M, they're 2-0 and in conference play, 3-1 and overall. Jackson State is 1-1 one one in conference, of course, losing to Florida A&M, and they're 3-2 and overall. Alabama A&M is 1-1, one 2-2, and one, two and, two. and after that, there is a nice drop-off, unfortunately. I am surprised with Alabama State being 1-2. They should be 2-1, and one, but they lost that game to Tuskegee. Understand that one loss, the other loss, is to Florida A&M. And the way Florida A&M is playing right now, I can see why they lost. 
Now, in regards to Bethune and Mississippi Valley, uh, Bethune has won one game. Valley has yet to win a game. Uh, but Valley has always come to the table, and they always seem to defeat a team that they're not supposed to beat. Could that be this weekend? They're hosting. Notice I said they are hosting the division leader right now in Florida A&M. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not this is the weekend that Florida A&M takes an L. But Valley will have to play the game of their life. But it's but Valley always has a game that they win that they are not supposed to win. So we'll see whether or not this is that weekend. Now, as we continue on with the standings here, in the West, you see Prairie View out front. But Grambling and Southern, they're undefeated in conference play. But Grambling is 2-2 two and two with Prairie View. But Southern University is 1-2. and two. Hence the reason why I said it'll be interesting to see whether or not Southern can come back and get on the, uh, the winning track. And as you can see here, uh, the field is clean. Um, they're getting ready to play. But the reason why I bring up Southern University is because uh, two weeks ago, Southern finally had a win and in, in conference play and bringing the, bringing the overall record to one and two. But as far as everyone else, another team I'm very surprised with right now is, is Alcorn. Alcorn right now is one and three overall. But 0-1 in conference as well as Pine Bluff, 1-3 overall. But Texas Southern, and this is perhaps the biggest surprise of all, is that Texas Southern is yet to win a game. And TSU has always been very successful, especially the last few years. Texas Southern uh, with Coach McKinney, uh, this is his fifth year. This is his fifth season. Last year he had that breakout year in terms of uh, uh, winning, uh, winning a few games that he wasn't supposed to win, saying, hey, uh, we're TSU, TSU is back, and we're here. But this year, not, not just yet. So we want to see whether or not they can eventually get back on the winning track because uh, for this week, TSU is hosting Lincoln of California, and I'm almost certain that they should win this week. They should win this week. Uh, if not, then it's going to be a long season for TSU, for Texas Southern as well. And, and if they are successful in winning today, then at least they get back on the winning track. They will have tasted victory. And, and they will. But the, but the next thing is for them is that they need to be able to win in a conference game. Now, of course, being a Jackson State Tiger, I hope that conference game is not against Jackson State. However, stranger things have happened. But as we talk about Kentucky State, and, and with Kentucky State, uh, with this homecoming, this, was, this has been very refreshing for KSU uh, to see the fans come back, to see the alums come back for homecoming. Not only, not only the alums, but you had a lot of KSU fans to come back because I, I was able to see some individuals that were friends of KSU, supporters of Kentucky State, and they are here this weekend. And to see them come out and to see them party and to see them just have a great time. And when you see what's going on over in tailgate city they're enjoying themselves let me say this again over in tailgate city they're enjoying themselves quite well and all of the fans over there they're tailgating all over the place and and you can easily see where all the fans are they are just out there so you gosh I can almost tell you, you have as many people, probably more individuals over in Tent City, or should I say in Tailgate City, 
then they're in the stands. But, of course, the game doesn't start for another 19 minutes. So more than likely, all of these fans will start migrating over here for the game uh, as the game gets closer and closer to its start time. And speaking of start time, because of rules and regulations and making sure I adhere to all of the copyright material and all of the, um, the games and all of the, and because of the, the rights of the game, I have to make sure that I adhere to uh, who has the copyright for this game. And that happens to be HBCU Go. And because of that, I have to make sure that I shut down my broadcast a little early today because of that. The only reason why I started late today is because I covered the homecoming parade for Kentucky State University. KSU's marching band started the parade off. And if you want to see the parade in action, why don't you go to www.yourstreet.tv. That is www.yourstreet.tv to see that halftime show. I'm sorry, that homecoming parade. It was a great parade. And like I said, in order to see the parade, and also see any of the festivities that actually took place here at Kentucky State that I was able to cover, please make sure you go online, go to my site at www.yourstreet.tv, and you'll be able to see the links that you can easily go to and see the events as they, uh, as they transpired live that's what we do we make sure we cover all events and all events alive and with that being said this is michael jefferson with block sports and i hope you are able to continue to join me and join me again on tuesday night at 8 p.m as we have our block sports show at 8 p.m as we take a look at all of the football scores that have taken place on this weekend, and we hope that you're able to join us. But more than anything else, make sure that you support your favorite HBCU because without your support, it's probably a guarantee that no one else will because if you don't support, if you don't show your support, why should anyone else support your school? With that being said, guys, may God bless you, may God keep you, and stay safe.